everybody, it's Amanda here from ScreenPinMommy.co.uk and I've got a bit of a different video for you today. Today we're going to be trialling and testing the Stampin' Blends. I do have the full set, I was lucky enough to be able to purchase them at a massive discount because I'm a demonstrator and today I've got a little bit of help with me today. I've got my little girl Alexia, come and say hello. <laughs> now she's been using these because she does a lot of colouring and she does have other brand markers and she's been testing these out to see how they compare. Um, so what we're doing is we've got quite a lot of different things that we're going to test these markers on and see uh, how they how they come up and see what they will work on and what they don't work on. Some we've tried before, some we're doing off the cuff, you know me, I like to do things um, <laughs> as they pop out of my head. So we're going to be trying them on some embellishments, we're going to be trying it on different papers, we're going to be trying it colouring with different inks and see what the results are. Okay, so um, as you can see you have got a uh, this is the full set, so there's a selected range of colours, but it's a good selected range, it's the key colours that you need really, and you get two of each, one's a light and one's a dark, you get the colour lifter pen or blend pen, and then you get an ivory pen, which I think is, where's it gone, that one, and you also get a bronze, and those are to help you with skin tones, and that is the full selection at the moment, um, hopefully Stampin' Up will add more colours. Right, so let's get going and move all of these out of the way. <laughs> I have big colouring. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to try, and I did try a little bit uh, before I started, was our embellishments. We have our basic rhinestones, our faceted gems and our pearls. And they do work beautifully on the rhinestones. So you could have your, um, let's have a blue one. Whatever you're doing your project, you can colour your rhinestones to match. Okay. There we go. Stunning. And you, can ha you could get yourself a couple of packs of these and have a complete colour range of rhinestones. So that they're always there. Or you can just colour them as you need them. <laughs> you know. Um, I also did do the... Facet, clear faceted gems. I don't have many left. Let me use it. It is easier to use the brush tip end, um, obviously, on these. I think the stickies come off of that one. But as you can see, it's quite easy to colour them. It'd be easier if that had like some glue left on the on the back end. <laughs> But there we go. So you can have the whole entire colour range. Now these are the pearls. So let's have a look how they fare. And again, they're taking the colour beautifully. Um, and the more layers you put on, obviously, the better and deeper colour you're going to get. Uh, and that's quite uh, that's quite easy to do. There we go. Let's do another colour. Let's have um, a rich razzleberry. It just adds a little bit of different element to your crafting if you can colour these because obviously we only have them in the one colour at the moment, don't we? And that's pale colour. <laughs> so let's do one in a nice deep blue. That'd be pretty. And then we can see what that looks like. And as you can see, they colour absolutely brilliantly. Awesome. So that's that. So they work. And that is one way you can use them. Another thing that I did try the other day, I made a card using the glimmer paper and I wanted the, to see if I could get my glimmer paper to match my colour scheme and I did and it worked really really nice and now what I would advise is that you don't obviously colour the whole of the glimmer paper, you're going to waste your ink. And the glimmer paper is a rough surface as well. But what I did do was I just drew a border on my glimmer paper. And then I could have it to match my colour scheme. So if you get the Dazzling Diamonds glimmer paper, um, you can, again, have it to whatever colour you want. Um, so that I've got a lovely border there. It doesn't spoil the glimmer look. You've still got that lovely sort of... Um, iridescent look there and I've also used it behind there as well and it's really really lovely now obviously I wouldn't colour the whole of that it might spoil the structure of your tip if it looks like it's going a little bit fluffy I just went on the page like so and rolled it and it just went back to normal and then when you colour in you can tell there's no damage because there's no 
when a tip's damaged it has like a feathered look to your drawing and that's just normal so with limited use that won't do it any harm okay so now Alexi is going to show you the we've got some wooden pieces here these are non stamping up because I don't want to I've only got a few stamping up ones left and I don't want to practice on those so I'm practicing on these which are just cheap wooden embellishments but the the a similar sort of surface to the stamping up ones so if you want to pick a color Alexia and just uh, see which one you want to draw what color is that let's have a look what color is that uh, light Bermuda bait. Gosh, my eyes are terrible. So use the tip end. That's it. I'll give that. You colour in the bird. There we go. So as you can see, it's um, going lovely onto the wood there, and it will be obviously because they're alcohol markers. That will be colour safe. Whereas if you use the uh, many marvelous markers, that colour could transfer, or it could, if it got wet, it could come off. So there you go, that's worked. Do you want to do another one, quickly, in a different colour? <laughs> I don't think she's going to talk, she's not as talkative as me. Probably because she can't get a word in edgeways. <laughs> that is uh, Daffodil Delight, I believe. Yeah, you're doing that on the key. Ooh, that's a nice bright one, isn't it? So it's absorbing perfect into the wood there, as you can see. So there you go. You can change your wooden embellishments as well. And yeah, there you go. It's not coming off. No transfer. All right. Awesome job. Thank you, Alexia. So the next thing that I wanted to show you, that, and another thing that I was doing last night, is colouring the memories and mark cards. And here are two that I coloured um, and got really good results. Um, so obviously in your memories and more you get cards and they're already pre-printed and what I wanted to see was if I coloured on there would the ink bleed out because you know this is a printed we've not stamped it with anything um, and the results were actually really really good there's no bleed from the outside of the pattern there um, it blended really well as you can see here I've got some decent shading the only thing it did do and I don't know if it'll pick up on camera is you can just very very carefully see um, the grains of the paper going horizontally okay however I think it actually adds to the look especially on this one with flowers so it does show up the grains in the paper but hey it doesn't bleed out and it gives an extra effect so that's worked wonderfully so it works on the memories and mark cards beautifully the other thing that we was going to try was resin pieces and we've got some more acrylic pieces here which are like little flowers so I'm going to give these a try and then after this we're going to trial some stamped images okay so this bag here um, these are very old, I probably won't use them, uh, let's have a look, I think I fancy a pink bike, let's try this, um, light pink pirouette, I, I, you know, I like pink, I'm having a pink bike, so let's see if it colours this, oh it's not going to show, it's not dark enough, see if it colours this uh, resin, let's have a look. It is doing yeah it's covering it it's just that I'm using colors that aren't quite dark enough let's try go on I'll sacrifice one of my bicycles <laughs> for the purpose of science there we go the pinks just didn't quite show up so this is a resin piece I've had in my stash for a very long time so don't mind practicing on it and as you can see that has transferred onto there perfect we've now got a Bermuda Bay wheels but you know <laughs> I like it. I think that looks nice. I think I'd like a bike with Bermuda Bay wheels. No transfer, and that will dry colour safe. Okay, so it works on resin. And let me try my little acrylic flowers. These are non stamping up, however, you know, we do use other things, and it's nice to know that our stamping up products will, uh, you know, you can use alongside your other crafting things, which is something that I try and encourage all of the time. Um, you know, you, can, you don't have to have all stamping up or not stamping up, you can mix. 
nothing wrong with that. So let's give that, oh yeah, that's uh, going on there, lovely. These are like little tiny acrylic flowers with a little rhinestone element in the middle. Quite popular with crafters that I, well, cra popular with crafters that I know anyway. I used to um, get these all the time. Um, and so there you go, that's coloured beautifully. And the more you colour it, the deeper the colour would get. And obviously the more time you take over it, the better results you're going to get. So there you go, again, that is a, an acrylic little flower with a rhinestone middle so it worked on that I hope you can see it if I zoom in it'll spoil my uh, the set preset focus and it'll go blur out <laughs> let's see if I can just put it in the palm of my hand like so there you go okay so now we're going to try stamped images and we've done stamped images on let me just show you and then Alexia's going to do some colouring because she's actually better at it than I am We've got some stamped images on thick whisper white and on regular whisper white. What we're looking for is bleed. And I've stamped the same images on both cards in Memento and in Archival Basic Black. Okay, to see which is the best. Okay, so off you go. I'm going to change seats and let Alexia sit down. <clears throat> Just pick one colour and... Um, Pick one colour and see how it how it fares. Blue. <laughs> I knew you'd pick blue. Oops, careful. Alright. So where are you starting? So she's starting on the reg let's move this out of the way. On the regular whisper white with memento. Start at the edges because we're looking to see if it bleeds outside the inked edge. Is it bleeding out? A little bit, is it? Let's have a look. Right, try it on there. It hasn't bled very much. I think it's just where you've overcoloured. Try on that one. Try not to go right up to the... That's it. Go on, keep going. That's it. Go on. Okay. There we go. What's that doing? Is that bleeding? No. Doesn't seem to be. Um, so, you know, I think if you were careful, you could use either ink. Ah, it, it's transferred through ever so slightly. Excuse my pandas, this is a scrap piece. Ever so slightly on the back, but it's not ridiculous. Um, it hasn't gone on my mat, although I wouldn't colour straight onto the straight desk anyway. So let me just have a go with this one. And let me have a look in comparison. Let me see if it smushes the... Right, it's not um, smooshing the black archival ink there. It's not like making it look muddy. Um, so, but it has been dry a while, so that's good. Uh, is it bleeding out? Let me colour right up to the edge and see if that bleeds out. Doesn't seem to be, and again on the memento, you should be able to colour right over that black and it not mix and get muddy. And then obviously going up to the edge there, it won't bleed. So there you go. Um, on first impressions, it would appear that it doesn't particularly matter which ink you use. Okay, that's on the regular Whisper White. Let's try on the thick. I'll do the archival, I'll do the memento, you do the archival. Use a light colour so we can see if it bleeds. Okay. Let's see if it's bleeding out. Don't look too bad, does it? So, although we, you know, I certainly, the advice that I was, I've always been led to believe is that the memento is better. But on testing it here, there doesn't seem to be a difference. So that's going to be down to personal preference, I suppose, uh, more than anything, because it doesn't appear to matter. Whether it would matter when you use your colour lifter. Let me give that a try. Okay, so if we use the colour lifter here. Okay, and then use it here. Let's see if it, that makes it blend out. Bleed out, sorry. Doesn't seem to be making a difference depending on what ink you use. There you go. You've seen it. 
that's the results. Right, so what I want to do now is I want to find out if when I use the colours next to each other, they're going to bleed into each other. So, Lexia, do you want to pick a few different colours and um, see what that does? Wow, those are totally different, aren't they? What else you have in? That one? Are we sticking with those? I think you've got enough with four. Yeah? Gosh, you're talkative, you are, yeah? <laughs> do you want to do it? Is that the brush tip, yeah? Yeah. So. Okay. I'll put the lids on for you if you pass them over. Just do remember to store your stamping blends flat not upright and always put the lids on in between using them don't have them scattered on your desk with lids off because they are alcohol I do have alcohol in them and they will dry out quicker if you have a nice greeny blue colour that Bermuda Bay that will see if that bleeds so there you go they're not bleeding into each other either which is awesome um, I don't think it matters whether we use thick or regular whisper white. We seem to be getting the same results. Right, do you want to jump up? And the last thing that I wanted to try. So there we go. I'm still no that that one there seems to be bleeding ever so slightly, and that's the memento. The archival is not bleeding at all, so I think it doesn't really matter which, particularly which ink you use from these findings, um, so long as you just be very careful, I think, is the, and not go too close to the edge with the um, colour lifter. So there we go, you saw it live. <laughs> Right, so I want to see if I can colour this metal now. This is the last thing that I'm going to try. What colour shall I do it? Blue. Okay, Alexia's picked this blue, which is a Knight of Neva, and this is the dark one. So let's see if it will colour this um, metal embellishment, uh, which it has done. Ooh, that actually is really lovely. So it's coloured that, uh, you probably would need to leave it to dry, you could maybe do it in different colours as well, uh, you know, and have it in tones, let's have a look, let's try, which one shall I try now Alexia, what do you think, mm -hmm. this one, Rich Razzleberry, why not, let's just turn it around, and, that is the, and that's giving a, a very light, is that the light one? Yeah, let's try the dark one. There we go. Ooh, look at that on that silver metal filigree piece there. So there you go, you can colour those as well. And have them in your, you could get things from your regular crafty stash and have them in stamping up colours. <laughs> How awesome is that? Um, so there we go, we've got that lovely metal filigree piece there which has taken the inks lovely uh, and that's our findings so there you go we've done metal pieces we've done resin we've done the stamp test with the different inks we've coloured on <laughs> memories and more cards we've coloured on glimmer paper we've coloured on tiny acrylic flowers uh, we have coloured on wood and we have changed the colours of our stamping embellishments. So I think that's pretty awesome and you so you can do a lot more with your stamping blends than just colouring pictures. So well worth a purchase. Um, I hope those little findings have helped. I hope they've given you some ideas. Um, go and get colouring. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Alexia for helping. <laughs> Bye for now.